Hi guys, today's video is defunct fast food restaurants from the past. Defunct? I'm guessing that's like... Uh, dis distinct. Yeah, like, like distinct. For not for animals. Yeah, I guess so. Mm. Like, it's just, yeah. It's another life in America. It's a life in America. We enjoy this at Recollection Road, I believe yes. it is. I love fast food um, restaurants. So I'm guessing it's just, they just don't exist anymore. Yeah, I want to. I want to know what, the, what what I could have had. Yeah, I wonder if we're gonna recognise any of them. I doubt it. Because we might have heard about them. Yeah, maybe. Let know. us know in the comments, by the way, your favourite fast food which doesn't exist anymore, because that's where I think we're going. And uh, if you've had any of these, let us know if they were good mm -hmm. and you've missed them. If that makes yeah. sense. Smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, check out Patreon, by the way, because from the seventeenth of July to the twenty third of July, we'll be uploading a video. This might be out of I think it's one of the last ones. Well, we've already uploaded, but I'm but gonna say anyway, have, just in case we don't know if this is going out. Between that time, there'll be forty-eight hour early access videos. If you after this, there'll be the Popeye stuff. There'll be Five Guys stuff. There'll be Southern Barbecue and stuff. Also, going if, twenty-four hours before going yeah. out. If you're after this, we're having a baby soon. Like we real soon. The support so does help. There's but no, no, not even that as well. That does, yeah. Yeah. But there'll probably be early access videos. Oh yeah, we'll, for the next, we'll be pre-recording like, for now. when the baby comes up. Odd like videos, um, on there. definitely. So, but yeah, we'll be more on Patreon. We do have a movie channel which has got movies pre-recorded on there anyway for our full reactions. If you want to check it out, check it out. But anyway, watching my video is enough. Are you ready to check out defunct fast food restaurants from the past? I am. Yes, you ready? Are you ready? I am ready. Fast food restaurants from the past. What have we got? James? What have we got? What have we got, Millie? Let's go. Yeah, you can. <laughs> oh, you can move that mouse up. Of the biggest oh, fast food oh, chains. <laughs> For more than 40 years, Burger Chef was one of the biggest Ooh. fast food chains in the United Burger States. Burger Chef. Based out of Indiana, Ooh. the chain was founded in 1954 and it grew to operate 1,050 locations at its peak in That's the 1970s. 40 cents. The Big Chef and Super yeah, Chef over burgers were two of their most popular menu items. It shut and down they also now. invented a kid's meal they called the Fun Burger, which came with a burger, dessert, and a toy. Wow. Burger Chef even secured the licensing meal. rights to the biggest movie of the 1970s in Star Wars. Things wow. were looking pretty good for Burger Chef, right up until the company was sold to Hardee's in 1982. Yeah. Most of the locations were converted over to Hardee's, and the remaining stores that were already close to another Hardee's were just flat out closed by the end of the year. Oh, wow. So is, oh, wow. is Hardee's a thing now? I, I assume Hardee's. I imagine it. I've never heard of it, but. I was going to say, it was like over a thousand stores. How do you just disappear? Yeah. But if someone's bought them out, that makes sense. Harold and Helen Kite opened the very first Burger Queen restaurant in Burger Winter Haven, Queen. Florida in 1956. Wow. In 1961, business partners out of Kentucky bought franchise rights and would eventually buy out the Florida-based company altogether. By December wow. of 1973, Burger Queen was opening their 50th location and would reach 171 by 1981. Okay. Locations could be found in Florida, Kentucky, Indiana, and Tennessee. But in June of 1981, Burger Queen Enterprises announced that it was changing its name to better separate itself from the confusion with Burger King. Uh -uh. They settled on the name Druthers and maintained the same menu. But throughout the 1980s and 1990s, the number of locations dwindled. As of today, there is only one remaining Druthers restaurant remaining wow. in Kentucky. Wow. One Druthers left. Is it any good? Let us know if you've been. After well-known country singer and Grand Ole Opry comedian Minnie Pearl lent her name to Minnie Pearl's Chicken in the 1960s, the business quickly boomed, and at one point there were over 500 locations across the country. The franchising model allowed them to grow quickly, however overexpansion, poor management, and accounting problems led to an investigation by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. By the end of the 1960s, Minnie Pearl's chicken was closed for good. Wow. Oh, wow. Minnie Pearl was pretty embarrassed to have her name attached to the failure. However, she did make quite a lot of money from the venture. I'm, I'm, sure. I'm sure she's doing all right. I don't know who she is, but I'm sure she did all right. Ah, uh, she did. Henry's Hamburger saw success in the 1950s and 1960s, okay. offering 10 burgers for a buck. Founded in Chicago, Illinois in 1954, Henry's Hamburgers was a branch of Bressler's Ice Cream Company, and they grew That's to so have cheap. 200 locations wow. during the 1960s. Then soon after, in the 1970s, the chain saw a decline. Unlike Burger King, Wendy's, and McDonald's, Henry's Hamburgers failed to add a drive through or drive-in feature, wow. which led to locations closing. If you were a big fan of Henry's You had a McDonald's that does hamburgers, that's driving. It's just so much more convenient, isn't it? Why would you pull up 
can go there. Exactly. Don't want to drive. So, so much more can be. Oh, I would have a few customers, but anyone who doesn't want to get out of a car, just go straight to other places. Yeah. Drive through is actually so important, aren't they? Yeah. Not in Jersey, mate. So note. if someone wants some money, I know I'm the actually, perfect spot. But I'm surprised that it's not become a th- for McDonald's at least because McDonald's uh, yeah, is like where biggest... it is where it is it can't be done. Yeah, but make another one on the other side of the island. I'm telling you. Yeah, there won't be enough custom to have to. There would. I know a perfect place for drive through. So if you want to come over and bring all the money because I don't have any, um, we can do it and go. You can be sixty. I'll be forty. I've got the ideas. We can do it. Brainwave. We need a chef though. We also need a chef. Hello. Bring a chef, please. <laughs> Hamburgers, you're in luck because one location still exists. Oh, wow. Benton Harbor, Michigan is the home of the only remaining location. Oh. Let us know if you've been to it. We, maybe we should go to it one day. I hope it's 15 cent for a burger. <laughs> still. <laughs> what, 15 quid? Founded in 1956, <laughs> the Miami-based Lums was known for hot dogs steamed in beer. Okay. And Ooh. at one point, they had over 400 locations. The chain was so successful, they were able to purchase Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas for $60 million in 1969. What? Lums even had Milton Berle starring as their national spokesperson during the 1970s. But even that wasn't enough to keep the hot dog chain out of trouble. After changing hands a couple of times, Lums filed for bankruptcy in 1982 and would go on to close all of their locations by 1983. Yeah, Lums was at the peak as well. That's mad, isn't it? Mm. Oh, it can just, just drop off. That's, that's scary, isn't it? Yeah. In 1957, Gino's Hamburgers was founded in Maryland, and it was owned by Baltimore Colts great Gino Marchetti. Okay. Gino's was known for hamburgers, and they had the Sirloiner, the Jumbo Gino, Ooh, and the Jumbo Gino Gino. Giant. Gino. <laughs> the restaurant also served fried chicken, because they owned the franchising rights to Kentucky Fried Chicken for the mid-Atlantic states. Oh, okay. At its peak, Gino's Hamburgers had 359 locations open, but it was eventually purchased in 1982 by the Marriott Corporation. Following the deal, Marriott rebranded locations as Roy Rogers restaurants, You're and the final biases. Gino's location closed its doors in 1986. I know it's all relative with what people got paid, but it's still mad seeing it. Up and Taco was founded in 1956 by Big Donut founder Russ Wendell in Southern California. Tacos. During its heyday, the chain had more than 100 restaurants around the region. As the name suggests, they were known for hot dogs and tacos, but the menu also featured a variety of slushes and burgers. Okay. The Tonight Show host, Johnny Carson, loved the place, and it was also mentioned in the Chevy Chase movie, Fletch. Okay, not seen it. Taco nope. Bell would go on to buy out 99 of the uh, Pup and Taco locations in nice 1984. Taco Bell. And a few locations even hung on into 2010. Nice to know where it came from. Mm. Bit of history behind there. But it makes sense if you're a smaller brand, they come in, mm. buy you out, and then turn them into Wetsons them. Wetsons was inspired by Wetsons. the original McDonald's <laughs> location in San Bernardino, California. The chain operated from 1959 to 1975 and was known for its signature Big W Burger, okay. as well as 15 cent burgers and 10 cent fries. At their peak, there were approximately 70 locations in the greater New York City area, but they were unable to compete with the likes of Burger King and McDonald's. Once this forced them to close in 1975 after an ill-fated merger with Nathan's Famous, but their burger and fries combo for just a quarter couldn't be beat. <laughs> Delights of America was a fast food chain that offered healthier options compared to their competitors. Okay. Delights was founded in Georgia in 1978 by Doug Shelley and Jeffrey Miller. They began franchising in 1983, and by 1985 they had more than 100 stores. Quite when a lot. chains like McDonald's, Burger King, and Wendy's began to add salads, baked potatoes, and other items to their menus, mm. it spelled the end for Delights. Wow, just them little the changes. They stopped yeah. franchising in 1986 and were beginning to close restaurants. Chapter 11 bankruptcy came next, and in 1987, 90% of the remaining company-owned stores were sold to Hardee's, with most Hardy of the converting to Hardee's restaurants. How many Hardee's restaurants is there? Are they still going? I assume they are. It'd be on this video, it's Kenny not one Rogers yeah. Roasters was launched by singer Kenny Rogers in 1991, Makes along sense. with KFC mogul John Brown. The chain specialized in rotisserie chicken, and they soon expanded to 425 locations. 
Even with Kenny Rogers' fame, it just wasn't enough to keep things profitable. Okay. By 1998, the chain was bought out of bankruptcy by Nathan's. Following restructuring, locations began to close, and by 2011, all U.S. locations were closed. The shame. company was then sold to a franchisee from Asia, where Kenny Rogers Roasters can still be found. Wow. A famous name just can't always carry it, no. though. It just shows you can get a bit of success. But you've initial. got to keep people in. You get the initial. If you enjoyed yeah. this video, definitely. That was good. I enjoyed that. It was good. Not yeah. heard of any of them. I've heard no. of Kenny Rogers, obviously. So I but guess not the not the restaurant. I don't, I don't never guess he had a restaurant. Uh, let us know if you've been to some of them because obviously some of them still have mm -hmm. one, don't they? So maybe you've been. Maybe you're planning on going. Let us know in the comments below. Maybe we'll go to one of them maybe. one day in the future. Smash that button, guys. Smash the subscribe button. And watch the video. Have a fantastic day. And we'll see you, legends, in the next one. Peace.